When two tigers stumble upon a grave north of an Asian forest, they pick up a scent beneath the sand-filled area and start digging to uncover the mystery. The ground quakes slightly, and a shocking sight reveals itself. After long moments of debate, the male tiger didn't spot anything unusual about the ground and roared his annoyance. But his sister wasn't in agreement and urged him to check again. The tiger squinted his eyes and that's when he sensed something the other tiger had been telling him all along. The ground was unusually disturbed, filled to the brim with loose sand. Then came the thick waft of meat buried underneath. All they had to do was dig up the ground. The female tiger felt unwilling to risk her life. Still, the male tiger proceeded to get them the meal either way. They'd been like this since childhood. She was always on the defensive side, and he was always ready to throw himself into whatever danger they stumbled upon. But despite their differences, they were bound by the unconditional love siblings feel for each other, and as such, unwilling to separate. So, the female tiger resigned herself to helping her brother dig up the dirt. What came next was a shocking twist. A camera was sticking out of the sand. This was a mysterious object to be found in the forest. The tigers stood side by side to observe this new development. They both licked the device and found it tasteless. They chewed it and spat the pieces out of their mouth. The camera wasn't tasty or edible. The meat must be buried deeper into the ground. Hence, they started digging with their large paws, urgently wielding their claws, with lumps of earth flying in all directions. The deeper they dug, the thicker the smell of the meat drifted through their nostrils, intensifying their task. The next item that came into view was a large satchel bag. There was no doubt that the meat came from it. Exhausted by the task, the male tiger pulled the bag away from the dirt and tore at it, desperately throwing bits and pieces of maps, a compass, camera lenses, a bottle of water, and, finally, a pack of dry meat. The two tigers tore the pack open and devoured every last bit of it. But then, a troubling spectacle sent them into a shocking halt. They recognized the human hand jerking in the center of the pit. They leaped backward, perceiving danger. They didn't know the name for this strange disturbance they had stumbled onto. Humans would have called it a grave. The dirt had looked disturbed because the grave had been dug recently and the objects they found inside once belonged to the same person whose hand was now sticking out of the ground. The tigers had met humans before and they knew that their hands were usually connected to their arms and then the rest of their bodies but this hand looked like it had spurted from the ground like a plant. The male tiger sniffed at it with curiosity. Then, he nibbled at it, trying to pick it up. But as soon as his teeth made contact with the soft skin of the human hand, the fingers jerked away. The tiger jumped back in fear, and his sister let out a loud growl of warning. She would defend her brother from whatever was hiding underground. But beyond stretching, the fingers were not doing anything else. The hand didn't look like a weapon. And when they bent their ears towards the ground, the tigers caught a sound that they hadn't noticed before. It was a human voice, but it didn't sound like it was mad. There was a plea in its tone, almost as if it was begging for help. This time, the initiative came from the female tiger. Her brother might be more reckless than her, but she was more curious. And she wanted to know exactly what was going on under the sand. So, she let out another growl and started digging up the dirt around the mysterious human hand. Her brother didn't hesitate before he began digging as well. He didn't know what his sister's plan was, but he would follow her till the end of the earth if need be. That's what he'd always done, and that's what he'd always do. After all, he owed it to their mother. Indirectly, he had been the cause of her death. A year ago, when he and his sister were just little cubs, he had wandered too close to a cliff while they walked up in the mountains. He had lost his balance, and his tiny paws had slipped down the cliff. He would have fallen to his death if his mother hadn't jumped. She had grabbed him by the scruff of his neck and thrown him to the safety of the rocky path, but in doing so, she had slipped and fallen herself. The cubs had taken several minutes to reach her under the cliff. She was still alive, but barely. And when she had finally closed her eyes forever, the two tiger siblings had sworn they would always protect each other from harm, just like she had done for them. The tigers roamed the forest together, staying alert and avoiding the paths their mother had warned them against. They recognized familiar trees and could tell different track prints of animals. The larger hooves and paws spelled trouble. They stayed away as their mother had taught them. It was heartwarming to think that they hadn't forgotten about their mother's tutoring.
Sooner or later, they would be large enough to defend themselves and ward off dangerous animals. But for the time being, they were lonely, hungry, and terrified. And they were lost. They were too young to hunt enormous prey like their mother and unskilled in catching rodents without scaring them off. This endless pursuit eventually wore them out. It wasn't their nature to feed on plants or shrubs. Even if they tried, they didn't taste good and often made them sick. Within a few weeks, they were already on the brink of death. But then, help had come from the most unexpected source of all. When their mother was alive, she had warned them against humans. They were strange creatures who walked on two long paws and were able to kill animals with loud attacks coming from a long distance away. They knew they were supposed to flee if they ever met one in the woods, and yet they were simply too exhausted to move. When a hunter found them hidden behind a bush, thin and cold and weak, they were sure they would not live to see another day. But surprisingly, the hunter hadn't turned his weapon on them. He had stroked their bellies with a gentle hand before sitting down next to them. The tigers whimpered in fear, but their terror turned into an overwhelming hunger when the human fished some dried meat out of his backpack. He spilled some water in their mouths from his own canteen, then fed them his beef jerky one bite at a time. The cubs were stunned. They should have refused the offering. Humans were enemies, and they were also skillful liars. But they were too hungry to turn their nose up at the meat. And so, they ate. When they were done, they let the human run his fingers through their fur some more. Then, he had gotten up on his two long paws and walked away, leaving them alone. It had taken a long time for the scent of him to wash off their fur. And perhaps, this was the reason why now they were so determined to find out what was hiding beneath the ground. The hands smelled like human. The scent didn't belong to the man who'd fed them when they were little cubs, but they guessed that all humans smelt more or less alike. And perhaps this one was nice too. They couldn't know this, but John was in fact a very nice human. He was not a hunter, but an amateur photographer. A few hours earlier, he had entered the thickets of the forest on a hiking expedition. He was born in the southern area of the country and had never been to a mountain forest before. He was captivated by the forestry around him as he roamed and found it hard to avert his gaze from the wandering animals. The forest didn't resemble any other he had explored. The landscape and the special kinds of trees were incomparable. He was hungry for more discoveries and walked further, capturing pictures with his camera. Fueled with an insurmountable amount of energy, he walked further into the thickets until, suddenly, a surprise caught his eye. John's heart skipped a beat, staring at the wild beauty. Is that what I think it is? He whispered to himself. A small animal was feeding on shrubs in front of him. John walked cautiously to avoid arousing its suspicion. He had to take a picture and show the world one of its rarest species. What is a musk deer doing in this part of the country? He murmured under his breath. He considered it an uncommon thing. The tan-coated animal with its beady eyes hadn't noticed the intrusion, and John took advantage of the opportunity. He pulled out the camera from his pocket, but the animal was alarmed by the clicks it bolted. Displeased with the musk deer's reaction and the blurry pictures he took, he made a ridiculous decision to run after it. But he wasn't born to run in this territory. His limbs weighed heavily and his breaths gradually depleted. He was barely catching up with the animal's speed. His heart began to pound loudly, but he prevailed and raced onward. The deer leapt over a pit in the ground. Without overthinking the situation, John continued sprinting and jumped as well, but his legs were clearly shorter than the deer's. And to his misfortune, he fell into the pit. He yelled in pain as he tumbled on a bed of rocks and hardened dirt. He scrambled back onto his feet and noticed with a sigh of relief that the pit was just slightly deeper than his own height. If he managed to leverage himself onto his arms, he would be able to climb out of it in no time. But, in his rushed attempt to get out of the pit, John failed to realize that the hole he'd fallen into was shaped like a perfect rectangle, one that was big enough to host a coffin. He'd fallen into a freshly dug grave. He had unknowingly stumbled upon a small, unconsecrated cemetery. A farmer had passed away the day before, and the community had dug the grave they would lower his coffin into at the end of the day. Unfortunately, that meant that the earth was soft and unstable, and when John tried to pull himself up and out of the pit, the fresh dirt came crumbling all over him, burying him alive. Josh instinctively shut his mouth and eyes to keep the dirt out and managed to cup a hand over his nose to protect his airways from getting obstructed. 
he kept the other hand up, hoping that someone would spot it and understand what had happened. But beyond that, he couldn't do anything to save himself. A mountain of dirt had fallen over him, and its weight was simply too heavy for him to shake off. He couldn't move a muscle other than the fingers of the hand he'd managed to keep out, and he was pretty sure he didn't have much longer to live. John felt like he had finally found a hobby that was aligned with his beliefs. He had a purpose of conserving animal biodiversity and usually knew what to do in emergency situations. He was proud of his expertise, but being entombed in a forest wasn't what he had dreamed of. He could hardly believe he was buried alive in the middle of the woods. It was ironic and he almost laughed at the thought. Unfortunately, he struggled to breathe with the layers of sand over his face. The small pocket of air he'd saved by cupping his hand over his nose was depleting. There was no chance of him escaping. His inability to call for help worsened the matter. The pit was dark and the more he struggled to free himself, the tighter he was squeezed within the grave. Panic started to creep in his bones. He tried to keep his breathing slow and steady, but it was getting hard to breathe at all. Was he just prolonging his suffering? He just hoped he would pass away painlessly before dying. But fate had different plans for him, and these plans came in the form of two tigers. They had approached a part of the forest they rarely ventured to and halted in their step when they perceived the flavored scent of meat. Where was this delicious smell coming from? They waded through the cluster of trees to find this appealing meal. They sniffed the ground, tracing the source. The male tiger led the investigation. As they inched closer to the source, the female tiger stopped and growled to capture her brother's attention. He turned to notice her body stiffen and her tail twitch with trepidation. She fixed her gaze on the sandy area and alternately maintained eye contact with her brother. The smell was coming from under the ground. The male tiger found it hard to believe. Usually, preys roamed the forest above the ground. They had never caught anything under it. And yet, he too could smell the scent of meat beneath the dirt. Together, they began digging until they located the human hand and then dug up some more. The ground shook as they moved the dirt around. More body parts revealed themselves until they had dug to the bust of an exhausted human. John struggled to breathe after being choked up in the pit, but when he'd felt the first handful of dirt being lifted from his shoulders, he had found inside himself the strength to hold on a little longer. Someone had found his hand. He took a deep breath as soon as he felt air brush against his head and used his free hand to clear his eyes from the dirt that clung to his lashes. He was expecting to see faces human faces, around him. He wasn't prepared to be faced with two terrifying tigers. John was stupefied. His heart pumped with adrenaline and his lips trembled nervously. Was he hallucinating? Perhaps this had all been a dream and he had run out of air after all. His pulse quickened and his mouth suddenly went dry at his inevitable demise. But the air smelled too fresh and the trees above his head were exactly like he remembered them and his body still hurt all over, which must mean he was still alive. And that was all thanks to two tigers. He almost fainted when he saw them approach him. The closer they drew to him, the higher his heart rate quickened. He was still stuck in the dirt from the waist down, and calling for help might escalate the situation. He had to remain calm if he planned to survive. The tigers marveled at the situation. They stared at the stranger with interest, and then they did something John would have never expected. They rubbed their head against him affectionately and lapped away the sand over his face. The feeling of their rough tongue on his sensitive skin made his brain scream, but he kept perfectly still. Unbeknownst to him, the two tigers were just doing what a different human had done to them when they'd been scared and in danger. The hunter had pet them before and after feeding them, and that's what they were doing with John. The photographer couldn't understand what was happening, but he certainly wasn't about to complain. The tigers kept nuzzling him until they suddenly froze and turned their attention far away from him. John strained his neck to see what they were looking at, but there was no one in sight. However, he could hear faint voices in the distance. Someone was coming. Humans, this time. The two tigers exchanged a quick look before retreating into the forest. A single human was a threat they could face together, but a whole lot of them were too unpredictable. John didn't move as the humans approached the site. He heard some of them scream in horror at the sight of him, and this time he laughed at the absurdity of the situation. The villagers immediately helped him dig himself out of the grave and hoisted him up on solid ground. In the distance, John saw his bag. He wasn't angered that it was in shreds and his lunch was gone. The tigers had saved his life, and they deserved a small reward in return. 
He was alive and nothing else mattered. The villagers took him to the closest hospital and the doctors treated him for the small injuries on his body. When he was asked what on earth had happened, John knew nobody was going to believe him and simply said he'd fallen in the pit and found a way to dig himself up. But the following day, as he went through the pictures on his camera, he was shocked to find several close-ups of the two tigers. They must have involuntarily pushed some buttons when they tried to determine whether this item was edible. John laughed out loud in his living room. He had proof. Days later, his post detailing his chilling tale had already gone viral. The whole world was shocked at his harrowing experience and some people still believed he was lying or plain crazy. But he knew the truth in his heart and he knew he would never forget the two tigers who had saved his life. What a shocking tale. Did you expect the tigers to save John? What would you have done in this situation? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you in the next video.